Hi, everybody. Let's do a little update weather video. You know, the last time I talked to you, um, there were two headlines. Headline number one was this week that we're now in. It's Monday morning. I'm putting this together for you. That headline was, we would get some rain this week. And it looked like the first chance of showers would develop into Tuesday morning. That's still the case. It looked like there was a second and potentially even better rain chance showing up on Thursday. That's still the case. The other headline at the time was that it appeared that we would get into some rapid ridging, meaning a return to hot weather over the Labor Day weekend, in particular into this coming Monday, Labor Day. That headline has been totally wadded up and, and tossed in the trash can and is no longer. All weather models are now showing that there are no 90 degree temperatures between now and Labor Day Monday. And in fact, a cutoff upper level low pattern, which I'll show you, could even bring some scattered rain shower chances continuing into Monday. So again, that's a big flip flop from the last time that we talked. I want to take you through what's going on. Let's start with the watch warning map from the National Weather Service. So on, on this map, you can see my, uh, my cursor from my mouse. The gray shade, that's an air quality advisory. This is bad wildfire smoke. Notice this extends for parts of the gorge down through the west slopes of the Cascades and then down into a good chunk of, uh, of Southern Oregon and over into Central Oregon and Deschutes. Right now, these air quality alerts are posted for or through the day uh, tomorrow, I should mention. So with that said, what are air quality numbers? Well, they're not fantastic in most spots. Um, this is from Oregon DEQ this morning. Again, this is 9.09 .09 in the morning. The yellow dots moderate, the green dots are good. So you see it's kind of a mix between Portland down into the Willamette Valley and down into Eugene. And then remember where the air quality advisory was up? This is unhealthy air quality in red over in parts of the gorge. And then these purple dots, this is very unhealthy air. This is just not good stuff over parts of Central Oregon, the Sisters area, remember, has been really smoky and hazy for months now, and then down the southwestern corner of our state. Air quality is generally pretty good out east, and I don't want to leave you folks in Washington out. I live in Washington. <laughs> so here is the Washington DEQ map, better than Oregon. Mostly a mixed bag of yellow, moderate, and green dots are good. The air quality this morning being reported is good in Vancouver up into the Kelso Longview area. Okay, so with that said, what's going on? On the left corner or the left side of your screen, you'll, you'll notice that's an upper level low spinning. It's a 570 low. I'm just looking at the number of the contouring right here. This is the upper level low that will lead to the possibility of rain showers developing overnight tonight into Tuesday morning. And this is the low that will come in tomorrow triggering that. And there's actually a second low that's going to come in and drop on Thursday. Uh, interesting, if you look over to the right on the imagery and see the, the X's, that's lightning being detected around that low pressure center right now. I do not have lightning in the forecast for tomorrow here on the west side of our state as that low moves inland. Um I want to move up and just show you the visible picture. Here's the visible blend. I know it's kind of teeny tiny. Um, actually, I think I can just go ahead and pull this up full screen. Yeah. See right in here, that's the visible Sally picture showing how widespread here on the west side of Oregon and Washington that the low cloud cover is. This bumps all the way up into the Cascades. Weather modeling insists on these low clouds being a bit stubborn on this Monday. So, with that said, it looks like the warmest we could be later today would be around 80 or 81. And then with clouds and rain showers tomorrow, we'll be only in the 70s for high. So again, very, very comfortable weather indeed. Okay, so how much rain are we talking? Rain chances return overnight tonight into tomorrow morning. This is the National Blended Model from the National Weather Service. It's kind of their gold standard of models right now, especially for present time into the 60 hours upcoming. So this is through tomorrow afternoon. And notice up in green, that's where it shows the best chance of decent rain. You see two tenths, two, uh, 22 one hundreds. There's three tenths of an inch of rain uh, up just west of the Puget Sound, getting up into the Washington Cascades. If you drop down into Oregon, it doesn't show much. It basically shows the possibility on Tuesday of getting more than measurable rainfall. Two one hundredths of an inch of the coast, one one hundredth of an inch down in Eugene, three to four one hundredths of an inch when you get up into the Cascades and on the West Gorge. So again, possibility of a trace to a little bit more tomorrow, but but probably 
not really a whole lot more than that. And I do, hold on, let me, yeah, let me click on this map. Let me move my face for a second so I can see what's going on here. Okay, so this is how much rain, this is on the uh, GFS model, again, from the Weather Service, how much rain could fall this week total all the way through Sunday. Notice some hefty amounts to our north, over an inch in parts of uh, northern Washington, over into Idaho. But not bad here at home. You see the blue contouring? This is a half of an inch rain potential for the Willamette Valley. About the same or maybe not as much where you see the numbers in Astoria, 46 100s, Newport, 37 100s of an inch. Um, and most of these numbers would come Thursday. Now, I often tell you that these forecast projections from the modeling historically, I don't know, 80% of the time, I'm just guessing, but let's say 80% of the time, historically, these projections are too high. I mean, if the model says you're going to get a quarter of an inch, you get less than that. So the model is saying in Portland, Salem, and Vancouver have a chance to get maybe four tenths, maybe a half of an inch of rain. Let's hope for a quarter of an inch of rain. And again, most of that would come on Thursday. So what about the flow pattern? This is the European model. This is Tuesday morning. And again, here is the trough. Just watch my mouse on the screen. Well, I'm sorry. There's the trough kicking in. This is tomorrow morning. I can go ahead and play this into the afternoon. It's fairly weak. You, I think you can tell that. But the trough itself does swing in, and that would be the rain trigger. Now, Wednesday, this is Wednesday afternoon. Notice how we're kind of in between. There's the low Tuesday that's moved out into Montana. Here's a new system trying to develop. And let's watch that developing system as I play this into Thursday. This is impressive. Here we are, Thursday afternoon. You can definitely tell this is a much deeper low. This is why we're pinning our hopes on maybe a quarter of an inch of fairly widespread rain on Thursday. It's very possible that Thursday, including the morning hours, we would have at least a couple of periods of hours of fairly widespread steady rain. That would be incredible. Okay. Now, notice the big hot ridging setting out in the Pacific. This is a 594. That's actually a 597 central contour high out in the Pacific. That would be a turn to hot weather. That's what the modeling a week ago or even five days ago, was showing could come in on Labor Day. But now, again, this is the European model. Let me play this into Labor Day. Here we are Friday. There's that low. It's dropping southward, but we're in a south wind flow. That's definitely still a chance of rain showers in the Portland, Vancouver, Salem area. Even Saturday, now the low is farther south into California, but we get a return flow. That's a day that could go either way. We could just be partly sunny, or maybe there's some scattered showers. This certainly would indicate with a southwesterly flow pattern the chance of storms along the Cascades and out to the east. Uh, let's go and play it in Sunday. Oh, it's not going to go that far. Sorry. Only goes into Saturday night. Here you see some warming trying to move in. I do right now show Sunday dry and getting back up into the 80s. Modeling does not show this heat coming in um, over Labor Day weekend. And with that said, let's just, I'm, I know I'm getting long, but let's just go ahead and, and real quick take a look at what um, the air mass numbers look like. We're looking for hot weather. So this is just the 850 millibar air mass temperatures. Everything in red is basically a chance of warm weather. This a color up in Northern Canada, well, that's 90s to even higher than that. The blue is cooler weather. So here we are, we're feeding off this cooler air mass today. Let me just jump this through the week. See how we're cool, that's Thursday, we're still cool. Here's Friday, a little bit warmer. There's Saturday, we're staying cool. Here's Sunday. We're staying cool. There's a shower chance Sunday. Here's Labor Day. Oh, my goodness. See, the European model right now likes, or excuse me, this is the GFS, the GFS model, likes not only cool weather on Monday, Labor Day, week from today, but also rain chances. This would be a deep trough redeveloping. So it would not be something. So when would we warm up? Let's just keep playing until we see some warm weather right here. That's Mon That's Sunday the 10th. A week from Sunday, this shows some return to 80, maybe 90 degree weather. That's hot weather there. That's certainly 90s in the mid part of September. So that's the next time the models or this particular model is kind of biting on that. Here's the European model now. Does this show anything different? I just want to get you to, this is uh, Sunday, and then this would be Labor Day Monday. It too shows a chance of showers of cool weather. This is actually an air mass map. I'm going to assume because of the cool temperatures, that's a trough and that's a chance of rain on Monday, Labor Day, Tuesday, Wednesday. Here we are going into the 10th. Mm, not warming up, not warming up. I mean, guys, the European model keeps us fairly cool until now we're getting warmer. This is the 14th of September, the 15th of September. 
So if you go by all of that, you come to the conclusion that the, at the earliest, we wouldn't see a chance of 90 degree temperatures returning until the 10th day of September. But maybe we don't see a chance of 90 degree temperatures until more like the 15th day of September. And now that's far enough out there that you wouldn't have much confidence that it actually comes true. So we'll see. All right. That was a long weather discussion. Today, clouds to sun, 81. Tomorrow, a few scattered showers, 74. Wednesday, in between. Remember, in between the lows, a shower chance, but maybe we're dry. Thursday, the best chance for soaking rain, 71. And then the rain chances continue on Friday, Saturday. Right now, Sunday's dry. Monday would be Labor Day, and that would be a temperature in the 70s with a decent chance of scattered showers. And that's what I have for you right now. So we'll see if the models continue to hold us in this cool pattern through at least the 10th day of September. We'll see how much rain we end up getting Thursday. Again, that's the day we're pinning our hopes for some significant rain that would greatly help the fire scene uh, across Oregon and Washington. For now, I'll let you go.